To convert the total radiated power to an electric field value in the vicinity of the crane, we need to know the power density of the wave at the location of the crane. If the antenna were an isotropic radiator, radiating the same amount of power in all directions, and if it were also lossless, then we would get the average power density at the crane would be the total power radiated over the surface area of a sphere. So it would be spreading out over the dimensions of a growing sphere with time. So we assumed 10 kilowatts, so we have 10,000 over 4 pi, and r is 230 meters, so 230 squared, and we get 0 0.015 watts per meter squared. But we don't have a lossless isotropic antenna. We have to take into account the directivity of our antenna as well as the efficiency of our antenna. And gain takes into account both of these. We are given that the gain of an azimuthally symmetric monopole antenna over a ground plane is 5.19 dBi. Since that assumes we have azimuthal symmetry in the radiation pattern, let's increase this by a factor of 2. So this is because more power is directed towards in the direction of the crane. So this is just an approximation. So we're assuming twice as much power is directed towards the construction site compared to the azimuthally symmetric antenna. If we convert this gain to linear form, because it's given in units of dBi, we're going to take 10 to the power of 5.19 over 10, and we're multiplying it times 2. So we're going to get 6.6. .6. This means the power density is 6.6 .6 times higher than it would be for a lossless isotropic antenna. Now we can calculate the power density of the wave from the AM transmitter in the vicinity of the crane. And this would be the power density of the lossless isotropic antenna, 0 0.015, multiplied by the gain in linear form of our antenna, so 6.6. .6. So all in all, we got 0 0.099 watts per meter squared. Lastly, we can use this, the relationship between the power density of a wave propagating in free space and the electric field of that wave. So this is S is E, this is for a plane wave, squared over 2 eta naught. And if we solve for E, plugging in this for S, we get E, the amplitude of E, in the vicinity of the crane is 6.11, and that's volts per meter. So how can we account for this in our model? Well, if this is the strength of the electric field in the vicinity of the crane, then we could give the electric field of the plane wave in our total field scatter field formulation this amplitude. So instead of setting the source in the incident grid to just a sinusoid with an amplitude of 1, Right now, we have just sine 2 pi f n dt. The amplitude here is 1. So you can set this, the amplitude now to 6.11. Next, what should the output of our model be? Well, since people experienced electric shocks and the equipment on the truck crane at the construction site became inoperable, it might be a good idea to monitor the current level along the crane as well as the voltage near the crane, but since our grid resolution is, is really low, let's just focus on the current flowing near the crane right now. How would you obtain information about the current flowing on the crane from the 3D FDTD simulation? Since the crane is not connected to anything, it's electrically short, so we might expect the current to be largest at the midpoint of the crane, the current distribution amplitude would look something like this as a first guess. So let's start with recording the current right at the midpoint of the crane, at, which is the furthest from the two ends. Spend a minute and see if you can figure out how you would calculate the current 
at the midpoint of the crane from the FTTD model, since that is where we might expect the current to be at its maximum amplitude. 